Hey, little friends. Okay, so yesterday what we did was we were working with uh, these, that we built this custom hash table slash object uh, class. We're still working on our data structures. Uh, and yeah, if you come to this video and you don't know where we're at, go to the playlist on my channel called Basic Programmatic Skills. Uh, it starts off with big O notation, then we move into data structures, then we move into algorithms, then we move into more advanced algorithms and how to use everything together. So right now in this video, we're still in data structures and we're working with kind of custom object classes that we're building. So I'm gonna get a little coffee there. So uh, basically just to refresh, uh, the hash table is created. We're calling it hash table, but it's really kind of mimicking an object in JavaScript. Uh, basically what it does, we have a constructor and we define the size. So we give it 20 slots, 50 slots, 100 slots, however many slots we want for our resources to be stored in. Then each time we set an item, uh, we, we pass it a key value pair, and then we create an, ad create an address with this hash function right here. This hash function, the address that it creates is always going to be uh, relative to the size that we initialize here in our constructor because we have mod this dot data dot length right here. So basically just gives us a random key to put this in, uh, a slot to put to put this key value pair in. So what we need, this is like kind of a mock-up of what one would look like. So let's say that we defined its size to be 10 and we started passing in key value pairs. Well, because the hash function, hash function randomly generates a number that's going to lie between the beginning and the and the dot length of the initial this dot data property, um, because of that, we might run into what are called memory memory conflicts, right? Memory collision to where multiple key value pairs get saved into one array. So we can call these arrays on like line forty one and line forty two. You can call this a bucket. The bucket represents the outer array, and the outer array can be filled with as many subarrays as we need, or it could be filled with one subarray, or it could be filled with nothing at all, like being just an empty space. So in this example, between line 40 and line 51, it's a it's a dot dot size of 10, meaning we when we initialized its size, we said 10 right here in this example, and then we started doing we started setting up uh, key value pairs within our object. Well, some of them went on line 41 into this bucket. Two of them went there, one of them went here, you know, nothing went here, one went here, another went here, and then all of this is empty space. So what we want to do is we want to write a function that will get the all of the keys out of here, right? So we, we're going to have to iterate through the, the arrays that have nested arrays or the buckets that have nested arrays. We'll have to iterate through those and grab the keys. If we run across a bucket that only has one uh, key value pair, we'll have to pull the key out of that and then we'll do nothing to the empty spots, the empty spaces, we'll do nothing there. So it's kind of a pretty cool little a little uh, uh, method that we're going to write here. So let's figure out how we do this. I'm trying to get some good coffee. Alright, so <laughs> right here, let's start up a method called keys, right? And this method is going to return all the keys within our given object, right? So we don't need to pass anything in, but we do need to do is give it initialize a keys or empty array. So I want to talk about this real quick. So let's go here. Let's open up with control tilde. Let's open up our integrated terminal and just type in node. So this brings up a, a REPL that we can write little bits of code in. So let's say const r equals one, two, three, four, five, right? But then I say r equals one, two, three, four, five, six. It's going to give me an error because I can't assign to a constant variable. So a lot of people think whenever you, whenever you um, initially set up a const, like right here on line 54, where you say const keys equals an empty array, that I can't add anything to it. But that's actually not true, because if we go here, r, r is still going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But if I go r.push 6 right here, and then return r, you can see that it actually adds to it. So with, with const, with constants, you can add to them, but you can't change them directly. That's called assignment. You can't ass assign something that you defined as a constant beforehand, right? Now you can do that with let. So if I go let r2 equal one, two, three, and then I go r2 equals uh, something else, that's fine, 
R2 is going to equal something else. You can reassign lets, but you, but you can add to cons, but you can't reassign them, right? So uh, that's just how we need to do that. So to get out of it, uh, to get out of node, control C twice, and that gets you out of node. And then uh, control tilde to toggle your integrated terminal. So now we're back to code. So we've set up a keys array that we're going to push to. And the first thing that we want to do is since there's multiple multiple layers to this, we're going to have to have an outer for loop that goes through each actual bucket. Then we're going to have to have if there if there are multiple subarrays, we're going to have to have an inner for loop that loops through this through this bucket through each individual um, resource. So let's go right here. Let's write our outer for loop. So for let i equals zero, i less than this dot data dot length i plus plus. So now we're going to iterate through the outer portion of it, right? So what we want to do is we want to check each time that we iterate through that if the individual bucket that we're iterating through at i, if that has more than one subarray, then we want to do something to it. But before even that, we need to check that there's even anything there because on like line 43, line 45 through 48, there's nothing in those spots. We're still going to iterate through them. There's just nothing there. So the first if that we want to write in our for loop is just if this dot data at i. What this means is if this dot data at i is a thing, if it's not an empty space, um, then we want to run this block of code. And we'll have another if right here. So if this dot data, because we know something's there because of this if on line 56. So if this dot data at i dot length is greater than one, so if it actually has more than one subarray in it, like that would be like on line 41, then we want to run this block of code. So for this block of code, we'd have to loop through here, the individual arrays we'd have to loop through. So we go for let j equals zero, j less than this dot data at i dot length, j plus plus. So now we're iterating through the inner bucket right here. We're iterating through this. So we want to get these keys right here on line 41. We want to get that key and that key. So how we do that? We could go keys dot push and we would go this dot data at i at j at zero. So this dot data at i would give us this. This dot data at i at j would give us this. This dot data at i at j at zero would give us this key, and we want to do that each time there is that this is a this returns truthy right here. Okay, cool. So that's the if we're, we're checking to see if there's something there. If there if the something there has a length greater than one, we want to run this code, but we have to have an else here as well. So we'll go else, meaning if there's only one subarray in this. So uh, I think I put that else in the wrong spot. For yeah, there we go, else. So else, what we want to do is, since we've already got the specific bucket that we wanted, it only has one value in it, we'll go keys.push this.data at i at zero at zero, right? Because this, in line 44, for example, it says this.data at i gives us this, this.data at i at zero gives us this, this dot data at i at zero at zero gives us this. So that's what we want to push into our keys uh, keys array. So then we can just return keys right here. So let's see if this works. So right here we just we're just setting a bunch of different keys. The values are largely inconsequential, but right here we're just setting keys. We're setting uh, ten of them. So right here, let's just console log this hash real quick console log hash and uh, control tilde to open this up and then we'll run node two point this. Okay, so the object that we've created, it has three empty spots, then then a, a bucket with multiple subarrays, three empty more spots, a bucket with multiple subarrays, three empty more spots, a bucket with one array, three empty more spots, then a bucket with three arrays, three empty more spots, then a bucket with two arrays. So this is a really good example of, of looping through like this one only has one, but this one has three, and then this one has two. So we want to capture all those keys, and the keys are right here. You can see the keys are just test one through ten. So we want to return all of those. We want to write this method, this keys, should return all of those if, if we did everything right. So we console.log hash.keys, 
and invoke it and then let's save it and let's go back down here and let's run it run it cool so it works so we've got one three four five six two eight nine so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten cool so we got all of them in this array now that's that's not bad the reason they're not in order like i said at the beginning is because the assignment their uh, their address is random pretty much pseudo random because of this hash function right here so we did a video yesterday on the hash function and the get and set method of our object today we did the one we did the uh, keys function so i think that that's enough methods within our class now what we need to do is start working with these data structures and actually taking little algorithms and, and working with these data structures. So like counting up the amount of times that a specific letter occurs in a paragraph of text. That's, a, that's one algorithm. Or finding the most commonly occurring character within, uh, within a, uh, a map of text. That's, that's another thing. So we'll do those in the coming uh, probably tomorrow or maybe even later today. But um, this function is, is good, so just learn it, and I hope it helped, and just stick with it. Like I said, this is all on the basic programmatic skills playlist. Uh, so if you just came here to this video without going to that playlist, I would suggest going to that playlist, starting at the beginning, and then working your way through. All right, so take it easy.